Lamentations chapter 3. I am a man that have seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. His wrath is God. The rod is correction according to Proverbs. So when we take the Jewish psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, that's Jewish. You can spiritually apply it to the Christian. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. That rod is an instrument carried by the shepherd. In the Bible, rods correct you. The devil's called a rod. He has led me, yea, though I walk through the valley and shadow of death. He has led me. And brought me into darkness. Again, we're right in the, the death and the woe and the misery of Jerusalem. But not into light. Surely against me he is churned. And churned his hand against me all the day. Now, this is Jeremiah writing first. It's, it's against me. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. Destruction, havoc, crisis will age you. He has broken my bones. That's not literal. He is built against me, unless he, he's looking at the city. The bones of the city would be the walls and the avenues. He's built against me and compassed me with gall and travail. Gall would depict it when Jesus died on the cross, they gave him gall. Travail, the Bible likens to a woman giving birth. He has set me in dark places, darkness again, verse 2, as they that be dead of old. What's the death? What's the darkness? It's death in the tombs. So verse 2, when he's brought me into darkness, is not Jeremiah, because Jeremiah is not dead. It's the city. There's death all around. In the city and outside the city. Of all ages and classes of people. He has hedged me about that I cannot get out. The devil says about Job, he put a hedge about a protection. Here's a hedge of, we can't go anywhere, we're trapped. He's made my chain heavy. That would probably be the chain of them being carried captive. They could not run. And God at one point told Jeremiah to tell them, Hey, listen, if you just surrender. Also when I cry and shout, He shutteth out my prayer. And there was a point a couple times that God told Jeremiah, Don't pray for him. He has enclosed my ways with huge stones. Think about a, a, a fence, a rock. He's made my paths crooked. Try to run on a crooked path. He's also unto me as a bear, that's an antichrist, and lion antichrist in a secret place. So here's these two animals that David fought to protect his sheep. And they're out there, mm, yum, 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 I see some sheep, I want them. And you don't know a lion's there. And a lot of times if you see a lion, there's another one somewhere else. He's the one going to do the killing. Read about lions. They're very interesting. He has turned aside my way into a crooked path and pulled me in pieces by the bear and the lion and has made me desolate. All by himself, no one else. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. There was a king in the Bible that eventually pulled his bow and the arrow went between the harness. 
God. Scripture was scripture. He has caused the arrows of his quiver where you carry the arrows to enter my reins, my control. That's what happened to one of the kings. The reins is the guidance of how and where you're going to go, the horse. I was in derision to all my people. And their song all the day. People sang about it. He has filled me with bitterness. And he has made me drunken with warm wood. That's a bitterness drink. It's, it's flavor. It's taste is bitter. Utmost bitter. I have been told. He has broken my teeth with gravel stones. How are you going to eat? That's painful. He has covered me with ashes, death, destruction. Thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. There is no resting. There's no satisfaction. Think about everything that peace is and you don't have it. I forgot pros prosperity. Ooh, tell that to Joel Osteen. Do you realize that in the cities of Jerusalem, it's all destroyed and burned? Everything you had in your house, gone. We read about the Babylonian army came in the Lord's house and the king's house and everybody's house and took everything they wanted. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. What are you going to do? And where is your hope? It's been all rebelling against God. What strength did Adam and Eve have? rebelling against the word of God when God said, don't take that fruit and eat it? And they did. What was their hope? You imagine that moment? They had no idea what God was going to do to them. You know, God could very really well show, you know what? I said, surely die, right? All right, here you go. Boom. And they would have died and gone right to hell. It's God's mercy. He did not kill them. I'm telling them about that blood of those animals that he made for clothing. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the warm, the warm, 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 warm Wormwood and the gall. Man, you want to write adjectives for what's going on in Jerusalem? There it is. My soul has them. Affliction, misery, wormwood, wormwood, warm, warm and gall. I'm not going to be able to say that word no more. Still in remembrance and has humbled me. I am looking at everything that's happened. You know, there's only one possible conclusion. I was wrong. And God was right. But this is Jeremiah. This is not the people. Because let me ask you a question. When Nebuchadnezzar says, bow down at the party music and the quarters put in the jukebox and bow down before my... How many people do not bow down before they great? How many Jews do you see in the story of the book of Dan? Four. What about everybody else? This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. Listen, of all the people I preach that in my lifetime, in our public ministry, you know what the Bible says? Many of them are going to go to hell, no matter what. And few are going to do what's right. Few are Christians who are going to correct themselves. And it won't be what style is done right, it's what the Lord has done right. For those that love the Lord and want to do right, at the judgment seat of Christ will be like, well, you know, Lord God, whoever it was, I'm glad you showed me my error, my ways, and, and look at look at the rewards I got. 
Had you not sent that person, had you not had me read that passage in the Bible, I would not have corrected my ways and I would not have gotten the rewards. I would have lost. I don't know about the Christian who doesn't want to do and just lost. Thus I recall to my mind, therefore I, therefore have I hope. My hope is in the blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. There's a great attitude. With all these hurricanes, with all these fires, with all this, this plagues, all this aggravation, if you can say, you know what? I woke up this morning, I got out of bed, I was able to pee, it's Monday. It's not Monday. Yes, it is Monday. No, it's not. Tuesday. I don't know what day it is. Monday. It is Monday. That's not the right attitude. Now, I'll tell you, a proper attitude, I don't care if it's Monday. The proper attitude, you know what my proper attitude, all right, Lord, you woke me up. Man, if I could have just woke up and seen you. But I woke up, here I go. If there's anything, I don't, Lord, I'm not going going anywhere today. And today I got schoolwork. I need help with all that. And I'm not even on Facebook as much as I should be. If there's anything you want me to do to please you, I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it. The Lord's mercy do not consume. America should say that, but she's not. We got these people over in Afghanistan, armed American people. Oh, I don't been and left them over there. Why don't you just say thank the Lord they're over there? I hope some of the Americans that have been left behind, if they're Christians, I hope they're trying to witness. And if they're going to die, let them die, I hopefully, in the word of God and put on the lips of Jesus Christ. Maybe some of those Americans God sent over there to be missionaries. They couldn't afford it any other way. I don't know. But his mercy is not, we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. Now what I preach is the Lord doesn't love you if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, but he still had that compassion. He's not willing that any should perish. That moment you hear that Jesus Christ saves and, and God says, and you say, no, I don't want it. God doesn't send the lightning bolts down. But after you heard Jesus Christ and after you reject him, don't you dare say God loves you. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. But we don't look back. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. There are Christians got hope in other things. Worldly garbage. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him patience. That's a hard verse. Because God has all the patience in the world. God is never in a hurry. To the soul that seeketh it. It is good that man should hope. After all this misery and destruction, lamentation. A guy read, I read, that lamentation should be described as a funeral. And after all the ministry... Misery. Jeremiah said there's still hope. I know there's hope for one man. Daniel. I hope that there's hope in another man. Ezekiel. Shadrach. Meshach. Ezra. Nehemiah. There's even hope, I believe, for Nebuchadnezzar who got saved. You know, the steadfastness in the Lord of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, changed Nebuchadnezzar's heart. Quietly wait for the salvation. Now, you know what that salvation there? It's in a man named Jesus. And how many years later was he born? Jesus, Jehovah saves. What it means. The salvation of the Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is good. 
and all the misery for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. Don't you blame others. My mother, my grandparents, they grew up in the ghetto. And pick it up and go. He sitteth alone, keep his silence. Because he has borne it upon himself. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be there may be hope. And his misery, there's troubles, there's problems. But there's still hope. Imagine what Paul felt like. Paul is one of those men in the Bible, the ministries of men. He would make Joel Osteen sick. Watch this. He giveth his cheek to him, them, and smite him. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was born in the lap of luxury of a palace. No. Jesus Christ was born and placed where animals ate. Even Disney couldn't come up with such a story. And Jesus was born and he grew up and the entire government wanted him dead. And he was despised and rejected of men. For the Lord will not cast off forever. That's the one we got to think even as Christians. Oh, you know, this world, the, the, the wicked people, they're, 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 they're making it and they're just great. And Lord, you know, these rich people are getting richer and we're getting poorer. Well, yeah, one day. We'll all stand before God. But though or through the cause of grief, whatever causes grief, Jerusalem's been in great grief. Yet will he have compassion, that's God, according to the multitude of his mercy. We gotta get that as Christian. I know there's no Christian there, but we can we can take that. That's that's a Pauline But you know you can't just go into Pauline epistles and just crack I can do all things you're taking out of context. And our lives and world is a great grief. Life is good. I don't know who wrote that. That man is not saved. That man does not live for the word, Lord. And he's going to be quite shocked when he dies and ends up before God. Or he's a total liar, liar and wants to make money. Life is good. You, you can say that walking through a hospital. There have been times in my jobs, I, I, I used to drive all kinds of vehicles. There would be sometimes I would have to use a bathroom, and the only bathroom I could use was a hospital. So I pull and walk in a hospital to use a bathroom. That's not a good place. There are other times I had to use a nursing home where there was a bathroom. That's not a good place. You don't walk them halls and say, Life is good. I wonder what happened to that guy or woman. Maybe something interesting to find out. Oh, I lost my place. Something good. For he does not afflict, I think, willingly. Nor grieve the children of men. It's God's fault. Why do the babies die? Hey, God, God did not do that. If there's one thing about psychiatry, and I, I know a psychiatrist told somebody I know, it's your mother's fault. I, I, I've heard someone say to psychiatrists, 
said that. Okay? But if there's anything we can honestly say according to the scriptures, and I can even give you the scripture, it is our parents' fault, Adam and Eve, why we're all this misery. But God does not look down from heaven, lightning bolt there, lightning bolt there, put a tornado in there. No, he doesn't do that. He conquers, and we'll see a verse coming up, sin. All have sinned. Well, you know, that guy doesn't get a miserable life. That guy's got a wonderful life. He's a sinner on sin. The wages of sin is death. He will die. And he won't be able to take what he got. That, that rich man of Jesus, oh, I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to get me some storage places and, and, you know, rent out storage rooms and stuff like that. And God says, tonight you put your soul. Everybody, every sinner will get their just desserts. The only one that, that got the just desserts was not his just desert. It was Jesus Christ, for he was sinless and he suffered for all our sins. Nor grieved the children of men. Are we grieving by an act of God, of a hurricane, of a tornado? It's not, it's not God, it's sin. And with the sin of the world, believe it or not, it will cause more and more natural because the earth is getting cursed and cursed and worse. The more people are dying and their blood is going to the ground and the people that killed them are not getting killed themselves, capital punishment, and the more the ground calls out to God for vengeance, the worse it's going to get. To crush... Under his feet. That's what that's what God told the serpent. All the prisoners of the earth. We're all prisoners. We're all stuck inside this body. It's going to decay and get worse. To turn aside from the right of a man before the face of the Most High. To subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approve is not. You lead a man astray. God doesn't. I know a pastor right now in the church. He's leading his people the wrong way. And he'll get to. We just got love and God's just blessing us. No, 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 no. Well, what's keeping them going? The devil. The mercies of God. The long suffering of God. God sent me there. To help correct them, they didn't want it. God sent a Jeremiah in their life. Now get Jeremiah out of here. They, God, God sent the name is there. Go somewhere else. Don't preach in Bethel, the Lord's Chapel. The sir, uh, who is he that saith? It cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not. Oh, there are plenty of people. There are plenty of people who date, dated the rapture. And they're wrong. Jehovah Witnesses and Christians. Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeded not evil and good. Look at that question. Now that, there's where it shows you all evil is not sin. COVID-19, all God had to say wherever, I don't know where it came from. I don't believe the government. I don't believe the media. But this, whoever COVID came up, God said, make COVID-19. Now release it. It's evil. But it's not sin. Hurricane Ida, go. Listen, if God can say, let there be water, if God can say, let there be trees, let there be animals, he can say, let there be a hurricane. It's not El Nemo. It's God. Now, Hurricane Ida and Hurricane Larry are evils, but they are not sin. And what can be the good of a hurricane? Well, the entire world was not a hurricane. You know, God could make the entire God can make a category of 146,000 hurricane and make it worldwide and he hasn't. 
That fire has not destroyed California completely. He's giving people time to get to move. There were people who were who are alive in Louisiana that Ida went through. And there are people out there preaching the gospel, knocking on doors with the gospel, and, and trying to tell people about Jesus Christ. And then there are people dying for whatever causes today, and they've been dying. That, that's evil. But it's not to sin. But death is because we are sinners. What is good? They get the power, boom, and you get to live extra. Maybe for you to, to find out about Jesus. Wherefore does a living man complain? Oh. A man for the punishment of his sins. What's that? God, why did you kill the babies? God, why did you destroy those people in Louisiana? God, why is there all their property being burned up in California? If you would study the Bible and study God in the schools, you would find out it's our sin. And that your national day of prayer and your revival is not working. Your prayer for peace is just as good as the Pope in his prayer for peace. It's not happening. Not when your church is sinning. We're going to have a great revival and you don't even have the King James Bible. You don't even have people to come faithfully to the open door when you're open. You don't even have faithful ministers teaching the word. Let us search and try our ways. All right. Paul says, work out our own salvation. And turn again to the Lord. That's repent. Jeremiah preaches, repent. All right, after all this destruction in Jerusalem, let's get back to God. You know that doesn't happen. Give me the name of the multitudes of the Jews that did not bow down before the golden image. Well, let us lift up our heart, there you go, with our hands. That's your upraising of your hands, not Pentecostal. Unto God in heaven. But you see, when people are in the church, they lift up their, a lot of times when they lift up their hands, you know what they're doing it for? Look at me. See me? You see how holy I am? <laughs> no, I think you're trying to get television reception on your phone or your tablet, maybe. The old-fashioned old bunny ears. Come on, what Christians and churches today are lifting up their hearts? They're thinking about next weekend, they're going to Mickey Ratland. They're going to go to work tomorrow and complaining. We have transgressed and have rebelled. That's what you want for a revival. Thou has not pardoned. Pardon is when you're guilty. There are churches, many churches with a Baptist name saying, Oh, we're all so great and wonderful. God just loves us all. we got to go out there and get the love to everybody. We're just... What about sins and all that? We're not that bad. All are welcome. A woman gets mad at me when I when, when she yells at me and I preach back at her and I say, listen, you're angry, you're upset, and your life is miserable. I'm just telling you the truth. I didn't attack you, you attacked me first. 
and I give you the answer. I guarantee you, my bet is that woman is a Catholic. But your Catholic Church has got a really happiness in it. You know why you're not happy? Because you have no hope. Look at that confession, verse 42. That was covered with anger, not the blood, with anger, and persecuted us. Thou hast slain, thou hast not pitied. And you know what churches will say when that happens in your life? But let's say what happens in your life is for a pure thing. God is trying to get your attention. God is chastising you. You know what the churches will say? You lack faith. All right, completely remove, repent. Some Bibles will say relent. Watered down. That stuff is not even watered down with water. It's watered down with slime. Thou hast covered thyself with a cloud. The entire herb at, at Noah's flood was covered with the cloud. That our prayers should not pass through. Jeremiah, don't you pray for them. There's many, many saved and lost people out there. They are praying to God and God is not listening. And their prayer is so general, anything could be, well, God's listening to me. No, I'm not. Thou has made us an offscoring and refuge. Refuge is almost a garbage. In the midst of the people. <laughs> Look at those Jews over there. I thought they had such a wonderful great God. See that great city? It looks like a city don't. Look at all the vultures. Look at all the rats. Our enemies have opened their mouths against us. And when a Christian does right and God chases them, or the devil attacks them, our enemies are out there ready to attack with their mouths. Fear, anxiety, and snares come upon us. A trap. Desolation and destruction. Now don't you say that desolation and destruction is only for sinners. Paul had desolation and destruction. Paul spent most of his, most of his life being handcuffed to a, a, a soldier. And he would make the best of it by witnessing and everything. My eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people of the city. Here am I in a week the reap and prophet. My eyes trickle down and ceases not. I haven't stopped crying without any intermission. I am not stopped crying. You see, the paper is right enough. Till the Lord looked down and behold from heaven my affliction, my heart, because of all the daughters of my city. My enemies chase me sore like a bird. Without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. My enemies. That's the people of Antioch. That's the princes of the land. That is fellow Jews. That's the same story they did of Jesus. Waters flowed over my head. And I said, I am cut off by the people, not God. I call upon thy name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon, the mire. How did God answer? He sent the eunuch. Thou hast heard my voice like Jonah out of the whale. Hide not thy ear from my breathing. Oh, you couldn't hear Jonah breathing. He was dead. At my cry. 
Thou drawest near in the day that I call upon thee. Thou sayest, Fear not. That's Jesus. You're out in the middle of a storm. Fear not. <laughs> o Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. Jeremiah. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong to judge thou my cause. Hey, God, I'm a sinner too. Thou hast seen all the vengeance and all their imaginations against me and the Jews and Jesus. What happened to him? I can't believe how many people that he healed were probably the ones that cried out to crucify him. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. This is Jeremiah, his personal testimony, how they hated him. At one point, they put him into the deep mire. At another point, they put him in prison. At another point, they were going to kill him. He was smacked in the face. You never hear anything in Jeremiah's family. You hear about Jesus' family. Matter of fact, a couple of Jesus' brothers even got saved. Show me anywhere where Jeremiah's family shows up. And he was a priest. He wasn't just a Levite, he was a priest. I don't know what service he had. Behold, they're sitting down. And they're rising up. Pay attention to what they're doing, Lord. I am their music. They are writing songs about Jeremiah, and they're not good songs. I can imagine what one of them is. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Render unto them recompense. <laughs> That's a strong prayer. What happened to love thy enemies? O Lord, according to the work of their hands, give them sorrow of heart, anxiety, thy curse unto them. Oh, that's even worse than recompense. You know, the Bible says about a Jew, I will curse them that curse you. What if you get a Jew that curses another Jew? Think about that. Persecute and destroy them with, with, in anger. <laughs> Recompense them, Lord. Give them sorrow, heart. Curse them and persecute them, O oh Lord. In the name of... <laughs> Jehovah. In anger. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was his. He came, you know, people come up to you, you. You chase people away. You're not nice. All right. Let, let's bring Jeremiah and preach to you guys. All right. Lord God, destroy them all. Get them, Lord. Get them with their anger. Get them. They won't listen to me. They won't listen to you. Destroy them. You want to call the police on me? I damn you in the name of Jesus. Oh, be Jesus. In the name of Jehovah, I damn you. Put me in prison. Get them, Lord. That's Jeremiah. Recompense, sorrow, curse, persecute, and destroy, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, my God. In wonder, Osman, I say, destroy and kill them all, and do it today. They're singing songs against me, Lord. And there is no rebuke by God. There isn't a Lamentation 367. All right, come on, Jeremiah. We got to love everybody. 
You, you, you just don't have no love. All right, Jeremiah, you got to go because you got a bad attitude. It's not there. You know, these lovey-dovey preachers and all that, they're going to be in the shop. This world, that, you know, every once in a while we got this one, I love you, I love you. Man, if you're not a Christian, you wait till Jesus Christ comes back. You're not going to get love. You're going to get a fire and a sword from his eyes and from his mouth. And he won't be wearing a bracelet. What would I do? You don't know what a holy and righteous God is. And Jeremiah is not complaining. And I'm going to sum it up and I'll close with this. Paul says, be angry and sin not. And there is no rebuke by God to Jeremiah. Now last week, this week, last week at the farmer's market, I just about had it with the DJ. And I, I pray, Lord God, you deal with them, you go after them. For the very fact is, do they trust in Jesus Christ? Or you just whatever it takes for them to get saved. That man across the, across the way said, "Lord, you do whatever it takes now to get that man saved." Lord, you take those DJs and you move them to somewhere else where they can get better income, or whatever it is. And, and I pray for their souls to get saved. That doesn't work. I know a man that did that. We call him the Bongo Man. He left. We were going shopping another place. He goes, hey, I like it here. This place is so much better. Hey, I still got those pieces of paper I've given you. I've come, I'm, I'm coming this close with, with the farmer's market and say, you know what? I'm, I'm ready just to wipe my feet. And let God destroy you because you had six years of peace. Get ready to get up, go to these people's table, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I curse this whole thing. Do they know you as their Savior? I'm getting ready because I'm getting angry. Now, to be angry and then sin would be I go kicking over the table. You know, Jesus kicked things over. No, no, no. no. Paul never did that, Peter never did that. But there were a couple times you check Paul. There were a couple times you you white scepter, and he gets smacking him out. 